everybody. Hope you're all well today. I had to restart my video. All right, okay. So for those of you just joining, um, we're gonna be doing a really fun project today. I had to restart my video. Uh, I was sideways. Uh, anyway, so I'm, the thing we're gonna be doing today is a lot of fun. I have the uh, what is needed uh, list-wise on the description of this video, but however, I'm going to read it off again because, um, or I'm going to read it off because just so you all know what you need. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need, you're going to need a cereal box or some type of cardboard. So I have my old um, box, little cardboard box from my trash bags. You need that thin type of box. So if you don't have a cereal box, you can find something. I'm sure you have something around the house that you can use. Also, you're going to need acrylic paint colors. And the colors you're going to need are white, a, um, a brown. This is burnt umber, but I would suggest more like a raw sienna, which I do have also. Um, you're going to need like an olive green color. And so I have that color of green. You could mix your greens with your browns. I'm not sure why this video is doing this again. Let me pull this down and see if it helps. No, it's not helping. Okay, anyway, um, and then you're going to need a mason jar. So for the paints, I said white sienna brown or a natural looking brown and olive green, or a, and, and that's what you need for your paints. Okay, so I have several of these just in case I don't like the ones that I had originally. Okay, and then you're gonna need um, a paintbrush and three throwaway cups. Uh, or if you have like, um, you'll definitely need two throwaway cups and a water container. You're going to need to put wa uh, a little bit of water in those cups. So if you want to do that now while I'm describing this, just turn up the sound. You can do that. Um, you want to put enough water in there so that you have a good consistency because you're going to need that. Also, you're going to need uh, a paint rag, a paint palette, which I have right here. Um... Lisa. I have my water things right here. So um, you'll also need a mason jar with a lid. You do not need this part of it. We can get rid of that. Um, and just have this part, the ring part, okay? And then you'll also need a thin cotton fabric square or cheesecloth or some kind of material. This is what I have. It's like a cotton um, cloth. If you don't have that, Fine, you know what, you could probably do it with paper if you don't have this. <clears throat> also, um, coffee grounds. I have what's left of these, so I'm gonna use those. Okay, <clears throat> a pencil and eraser. So there's a lot of items you need for this project today. So to start off, um, oh, what we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna lift this so I can show you because you need the light from behind. Okay, so what we're going to be doing are these really cool moldy jars with a dragon and can you see that let me zoom up a little bit so we're going to be making these little moldy jars with a dragon see it oh like you're hiding a dragon in there it's so cool so that's what we're making today okay all right so let me zoom out and get off the highway there i live by the highway okay uh, and next up, next up, we're going to set this aside. We're going to grab our um, cardboard and put all your other stuff aside for now because you don't need that just yet. You're going to need that later. Let's put all these things over here. Jars can be moved. I'll keep this one. Behind. Oh, hair dryer. You're, you're going to need a hair dryer. Forgot to say that. Glad I noticed that one. A hair dryer. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna zoom down if I can. Tabletop, tabletop arting. Okay. Now you can see how messy my table really is. Cardboard. Now you just wanna cut a square. You gotta think about how big your jar is, okay? And then you're going to Make your dragon 
around the same size as the width of the jar. And the reason being is you want it to kind of stick in there so it stands up. Just think about how big your jar is. Maybe wrap it around and see. That's about right for me. That should work. And then you can put that part aside. Zoom up a little more. Okay. Next. You're going to take your pencil and we're going to draw a silhouette of a dragon. We're not going to draw a whole dragon. Just the silhouette of one, okay? And I'm going to take this off so you all can see it up close. Now, I messed up my wing on this one, so I had to tape one on, but this is how we're, this is how we're doing it. Okay. Now, first things first, we're going to draw the head. So, um, I like to do just a little oval, and you can go back and fix it later, okay? So, draw a little oval on there. This head might actually be a little too big, so I might have to erase it a little bit. Once you have the oval, you're going to do an S, kind of, okay? So next is an S, a big S. Like this, see that? Kind of like, at first it's kind of like a U, and then you're going to bring it down like that. So it's not... So an S... And then you're going to do the body. So for the body, you're going to want to, I hope I get this right because I'm doing it upside down again. Okay, so see how I did that? You're just going to bring that line over. Now, you shouldn't be able to see the whole thing. So it should be okay just to kind of make it like this, flat on the bottom. Because it. I didn't do it flat on the bottom, but I don't think... You might need it a little bit. Okay, so then just up. Make the neck kind of thin. Now once you have that, you can maybe add legs if you want. I think he might be too big, actually. If I'm measuring him up against, if I'm measuring him up against this, he looks too big for me. That's way too big. I need to make it smaller. So erase if you made it. It works good for the video because, you know, you gotta, I gotta be able to show it. I'll make it smaller. I'll give it legs. Why not? If you're doing legs, you just want to do little little stilts like. But now you got to make the other ones even. You know what I mean? So you want to do the tail like this. And the tail is going to be even with the bottom of the legs if you're doing legs. Because you're really not going to see that. But... You, I mean, you may. So that's how I'm doing that, okay? Now, once you have everything drawn, you want to go back and you want to do your details. So the little oval that you did, you're going to make it a little smaller now. You're going to bring this down like that, kind of cut off the edge of it. See that? And once you have that cut off, you can erase that part. And then you want to straighten off the end of it. Now look, it looks like a dragon head now, right? So you just gotta think of everything as shapes when you're doing these. Okay, and then you wanna give it like some points on there because, you know, when I think of dragons, I think of little things on their head. You know what I mean? Here we go. You don't need to put any any eyes or nothing like that because it's just supposed to be a silhouette, okay? And then underneath where the jaw is at, you want the jaw to come up a little bit to make it look, you know, more fierce. There you go. This is the first part. All right, 
And now we can cut this out. If you want to add, um, I'm sorry, don't cut that out yet. We need to add wings. I forgot the wings. Dragon wings. So then you're just going to go up. <coughs> Pardon me. I need a drink. Like that. And then bring it down. Now you could do one wing or you could do two wings. That's up to you. I think I'm just going to do the one wing. All right, and now you're going to cut it out, now that you have the wing done, okay? Next step, cut it out. Zoom out a little bit, okay. Okay, just cut off the body. Don't cut off the wing. Now this don't just have to be super precise of how you draw it, but it's just a guideline, you know, so you know what you're doing. Sometimes I like to make mine a little bigger when I look at it. I'm like, oh yeah, it looks like that could be a little bigger. See how I change it up a little bit? And then I'll go back and I'll erase those lines. If, if you didn't cut off the lines that you drew, just go back and erase them once we're done. You'll be all right. Uh, also, my suggestion is to uh, tape something on your table if you're using the kitchen table so you don't get paint all over it because the Next step is super messy. You also can use the paint rag um, on top of, I have wax paper and I put wax paper down because I definitely needed it for my table. Um, but so if you have wax paper, my suggestion is to put that on your table uh, after you get done cutting your dragon because you're definitely gonna need it. Because this is kind of a messy project and if you're a little one and you're at home and you're doing this project with me, uh, make sure that your grown-up is watching you on the next step, okay? Because it's messy. And you don't want to get in trouble from doing something maybe that you shouldn't have. Okay. Without asking anyway. Alright, so now I've almost got my whole dragon cut out. Now, if you wanted, you could give your dragon like a little pointy, like um, triangle tail if you wanted. Okay. Now, I'm going to throw all this away, except for him. I'm not throwing him away because he's, this one goes right in here. Put that back on there. Now I took it off and I messed my little cloth up. That's all right. It's okay. Pull it while I do it. Okay. Next step, we're going to take our um, we're going to take our dragon and we're going to set it aside. Okay. Dragon aside. Don't need that for a while. Super cute though. Okay. And I'm gonna throw all this away. Done with all that. Oh, definitely gonna have to sweep my floor. Okay, next step. This is the fun part and super messy, all right? See if I can zoom out. Ooh. Sorry, my uh, camera thing's not wanting to stay. All right, zoom out. And down. Okay, next step. Um, I'm actually going to take my paint rag and I'm going to put it... Um, if I can find my paint right, oh, here it is. And I'm going to put it right here because this is also going to help me. 
and you, if you have it, you should do it as well. Okay. Okay, this one's all messed up. I'm just going to set him aside. All right. Uh, and so you're going to take your cup, I mean your, your jar, all right? Uh, so for this, like I said, you needed two cups of water. And the reason being is because you're going to put a little bit of water. You don't need a lot, just a little bit of water. And then um, maybe an inch, maybe even less. And then you're going to take some paint, white paint. And we're going to drip it into, not a lot, enough to color it. But we're going to drip that into our cup. That's why I said get a throwaway cup so you don't, so you're not getting um, paint on your in a regular cup that you drink out of. Granted, you could probably wash it out, but I, I wouldn't I would do that. All right, and then you're just gonna start mixing, okay? Now see how watery that is? That's super watery, right? Well, mix it in until the paint is all mixed, okay? Take your lid off, you don't want your lid on. All right, now the next step gets messy so be careful the next step is to take this painty this is called a wash a paint wash and you're gonna pour it into your glass and you gotta be careful I mean I guess you could put the lid on if you if you were worried about making a mess you could put the lid on for now and then you're just gonna start shaking it up All right, take the lid off. You can, I guess you could keep that lid there for now. And then pour this back into the cup and let it sit like this to kind of drip a little bit and back again. All right, now this is gonna sit there and all that stuff is gonna drip to the bottom. And then ever so often what I like to do is pour it, you know, back into this cup. You want to keep what's left in here because we're going to use it again, okay? We're making moldy jars. How fun. Moldy jars with little dragons in them. Can you see the dragon silhouette? It's hard to see. There you go. See it? Okay. Um, now see it's starting to collect down the bottom. Can you see that down in there? Now once it starts to collect, you can kind of move it around if you want. Pour it out. Let it drip out, whatever. All right, and then the next step um, is going to be the hair dryer. So you're going to take your hair dryer. Try not to blow this out into your face. And then you're going to dry. jar around while you're doing this okay because that still helps to coat the paint onto the jar start to really dry see how it's really starting to dry in there just be careful that you don't burn yourself because this glass gets really hot up here at the top and I'm going to turn it on for a little bit longer but mine's almost dry all right that's pretty good to go let me touch it and see yep it looks pretty dry okay next step is to do the outside. 
Um, and it's awfully hot. Ooh, it's hot. Be careful touching that. Okay, so you're gonna need your um, aha, you're gonna need your white paint again. And this step, we're going to take it very lightly, and we're gonna brush it along the top of the glass there. What happens is it likes to drip. Now, I don't actually like to get the whole glass completely like this, so I like to go around a little bit because. You, if you haven't noticed, some of it is really super white in there. I think maybe I might have gotten too much, too much paint in there. Maybe. Let's see. Maybe not. It's supposed to look kind of, this one doesn't look as much as this one. So I think maybe I might have got too much white on the inside. But anyway, what you want to do is kind of paint the white on there. Leave some space. Don't paint all of it because, uh... You want it to be able to show, you want your dragon to be able to show a little bit. So what I like to do is just go around in a circle kind of like this and leave a space kind of open there. Even though it doesn't look the greatest. And then you're going to turn on your hair dryer grin and you're going to dry all of this, okay? Now if you don't like, if, if it's too white for you, you can rinse your brush off in your water, which is what I'm doing right now. Um... And then go back and kind of wipe this off. And look, see how that wipes right off? And then you can do a lighter. See that? How I wiped that off a little bit? But you will need to recoat. Okay? So I had mine too dark. So now I'm going to have to recoat. So a little, I'm going to put a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush because I just had it way too dark or way too white. There. There, that's better. There we go. Now it's lighter right there. So now you're going to be able to see through. So there's always ways to fix it if, if you don't like it, you know. If it's too, too much. Now you can actually see in there. So that's good. Okay, I just had way too, a little too much on there. All right, now the next step is you're going to take your hair dryer and you're going to blow, you're going to dry the outside. I'm also going to do the inside because I just added more. So, and don't spill this on your table. jar is uh, mostly dry. Next step is to take uh, your, we can put the paint, the paint, white paint aside for a second. I'm going to put this over here because I do not want to spill it on my table. Put it on my paint cart. Okay. Um, and you're going to need your paint palette for this one. And oops, I just got that all over my fingers. And then you're going to add your uh, paint, your green paint. So figure out what color of green you want or have. I have two different colors of green here. I have a sap green and I have a, which that's too green for me. I'm actually, what I'm gonna wind up doing is because I don't like the color of the green, I'm gonna add some brown to give it a little extra, um, a little extra darkness to make it look like moldy, uh, mold or mossy looking finish, okay? I'm also going to add a little bit of lighter green. This is, I have this little bright, shiny, pearly green that I like to use. So if you have that, you can do that too. Um, like I tell you in my other videos when you're mixing paint, um, you don't want to use the brush end because the paint gets stuck in the brush and then it it doesn't mix proper, so use something else. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to this because I want it to be a more olive brown, uh, olive green color. Okay, and then get your coffee grounds ready. You set your jar aside for now. Get your coffee grounds ready. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the coffee grounds in one of my little paint palettes, that way I, if they're accessible to me, okay? Hope I have enough. These are my old 
piece coffees that I have. Okay, and then I'm going to use my finger at first, okay? So finger, I'm going to mix this paint. Let me zoom up so you all can see what I'm doing. You don't have to use your finger to mix the paint, but I am because it's no big deal. I don't, it didn't really bother me. I think I added too much of that shiny green, and I think maybe I might want to add a little more brown, or sienna, I mean. Ugh, now I Fingers got green mossy stuff all over it. Okay, and then this is my sienna color. So I'm going to take a little bit of that sienna brown, mix it with this green to make it more mossy. I know this looks kind of gross, but I don't want to use my brush for this because the next step is to use the finger to put the mossy color on. Okay, next step take your jar with your fingertip, as gross as this looks. It's, uh, to me, it's a lot of fun to just get into your art. I'm gonna add some more brown to that. All right. It's gonna be hard to clean off. All right, now you're gonna take that and you're gonna start, oh wait, before you do that, hold on. Add your coffee grounds to it. Just start dripping in your coffee grounds. This is gonna be a mess, it's okay. And mix it in. This is what gives it that mossy, moldy looking effect, okay? See how I'm doing that? You can do this with all kinds of paintings to add texture to your paintings, which is really cool. Okay, once you have that, next step is to start applying it to your jar. So you're just gonna start tapping it on. Add some water to your finger. Okay, and once we're done with this, I'm gonna say, now don't do it all over the entire jar. You wanna be sporadic with it, okay? So definitely at the top, you definitely want this moldy looking, crunchy looking stuff. I'm gonna wipe my finger off a little bit and use my brush next because for some reason I can't do it this time. All right, so Use your brush if you need to. The coffee grounds are going to get in your brush. Which is good because you want it. Make it look like it's kind of coming down a little bit. Add a little bit of water to your brush if you need. And then you want to do it below just a little bit. Try to get those grounds on there. I'm having a problem having, for some reason, I'm having a problem with the grounds going on there now. I didn't earlier. There we go. If you have to scoop them up and stick them on there, do it that way. If not, we can always use the glue later. Maybe. See how I did that? Just squish it on there. It should dry because it's got the... Uh, Mixed in with paint. See that? How it's given that grainy effect? All right, and you want that all over the bottom. Not on the bottom bottom, but around the edges there. All right, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. There we go. There's that. Now, now I have that. Clean off your hands. I'm cleaning mine off in my paint water. All right. Next step is for the brown, okay? Now you wanna take your brown. Rinse off your brush. You wanna get all those coffee grounds and paint out of your brush. What I should have done maybe is to put some glue in my paint too. That probably would have worked a lot better. So if you were watching this after this tutorial, put some glue in your paint. That'll that'll work. Okay, and then um, brown. So I'm using the raw sienna again because it looks like muddy dirt. <laughs> Excuse me.
can use your finger or a brush that's up to you add some water to it actually let me rephrase that add some water I'm getting ahead of myself here add some water to the paint okay normally I say don't use the brush but since we're adding water it's okay all right see how liquidy that is just like the white now we're going to Oh, I'm getting green on it. I'm getting ahead of myself. Blow dry it first. Let me zoom out. Blow dry it first. you blow dry it now add your brown to it sorry y'all I forgot start adding your brown remember don't don't get it all over because you want space for your dragon to show Now don't pull down. If you pull down with this, it's going to take off all the white that we already put on, okay? So basically, just tap it on a little bit. You don't need to do it over the whole thing. But you basically want it to look like it's nasty, brown, uh, old looking jar. You know what I mean? And do it over the green too. You want it to look muddy. Be careful. I just, if you notice, I just pulled off some of that. So be really careful that you don't pull it off. Of course, it does kind of make it look a little dingy, but. And go over all the green with the brown. Look at that. See how it's kind of spidering? Ew. All right, now where my dragon is gonna show, I wanna leave that. Is that, is that it? That's the space I think right here. I wanna leave that kind of open because I want you to be able to see the dragon through it. If you need to, you can just, there we go. I hope this works. I don't want it to be a bust. All right, so now we've got this old, nasty-looking, moldy-looking jar. Use that. Next step is to take that cloth I was telling you about. You could probably do paper if you wanted. Um, however, I did the cloth. And, um, well, let's blow dry the glass one more time so we don't touch it and get it everywhere. measure it and you're going to do a little square. If you're doing paper, um, I've not done paper, so I'm not sure. Just cut a square. The paper, you're probably going to cut a square also. Maybe color it brown if you want it or paint it brown, but you have to wait till it dries. Okay. Now, next step is to take your cloth 
uh, wait, actually, next step is to take your dragon and put your dragon in your jar. So figure out where your dragon, so right here is the most see-through for me. So I'm going to put my dragon right there. If you need to, like, bend it a little bit, you can bend it, okay? Like that. Can, oh, that's perfect. This one's better than the other one. All right, so see how he sits up there? And can you see? Here, let's... The whole point is to get it where it's, um, there we go, you see it? So the whole point is to not put a light through it. The whole point is to let it sit on a windowsill where you can see through it. Okay. Now you're going to take your, um, cloth I was telling you about. And you're going to put that on top. And you don't need this part anymore. So take that off. If you got any paint on it, wipe it off. And then you're going to take your lid, push it on top, and then pull that cloth really tight, okay? Oh, well, make sure it's all sticking out. I'm, I'm missing some here, so let's see. Okay, now once you have it all sticking out, it's all nice and taut. Like this. Then you're going to start screwing it down. There we go. Now that's what it should look like on top. All right, next step is to pull some of these little strings if you have this clothy stuff. Cut off the edges kind of, a little smaller. You don't want it, well, I mean, you can have it kind of tattered if you want. Cut it to where it's kind of tattered if you like. Pull on it to make strings come out, whatever. See how I'm making it look kind of old? Ooh, it looks like it's in an old nasty shop, doesn't it? And just keep doing that. Work with it. Make the edges look nasty. Nasty and ratty. Old. Making it look old. That's the whole point. Old and weathered. Like it's been sitting there forever. Like this dragon is extremely old. Alright. Now once you have that, the next step is to take your, um, take your brown. So you're going to need your paint again. Some people, you could do this with tea also. Tea stain it if you wanted. Uh, or coffee stain, coffee grounds or whatever. Now you're going to take your brush. And your brown. Sienna E. Brown, whatever. You have. Add some water to it. Goodness. Here we go. And then you're going to start painting the top of it. I have too much paint on that. I want to do it more. I'm going to have to add. And just keep brushing it in there. I think I have too much on top. So I'm going to wipe some of this off. Make it look kind of grungy looking. Add some green to it if you want. Make it look like it's molding on top. Just that weathered look. My dog is really barking today. There we go. Okay, and then you're going to do the whole side. So add some green, add some brown, and start brushing the sides of the cloth. Use your finger to kind of push it in if you need to. See that? And just go along there and... Get it all moldy and nasty. Let me zoom up a little bit. See how I'm doing that? Moldy and nasty. It does super look old now, don't it? There we go. <laughs> right. And just keep going till you go all the way around the whole thing. Mm 
Yeah, I don't have a, I wish I had a flashlight so I could put it in there. Now the whole point is to not stick a light inside there because when I said flashlight, I mean in the back so you all can see what it looks like. All right. Now, check this out. This was a long tutorial and I had a lot of fun doing this. Bring this up here. Put it over to the window a little bit. Now this is what you should have with your finished product project. You should have a dragon in a jar. Oh my God, that looks so cool. I love that one so much better than my other one. But these are really cool. Put them in your window, in your bedroom or whatever. They're super cool. It looks like, you know, like you got a dragon in a jar. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, I hope you all had fun today with this cute little dragon in a jar project. It looks moldy and old. Uh, come back tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I'll have another fun project for us to do. And uh, information on City Museum, ticket purchases, events, all that good stuff on our website, citymuseum.org. Uh, like us on Facebook, comment, subscribe to all of our stuff. Any videos that I've done in the past is on both sites that I've mentioned. Uh, until tomorrow... See you later.